The last time you saw me, I was in my brand new converted church townhouse and I was living there with my husband. I was newly pregnant. Fast forward almost three years later and we're in our wonderful rental condo just west of the city. When we moved in, we thought we'd be here for maybe a year and a half to two years. We are renovating and building our dream home just around the corner. Knowing that we were gonna be here for a while, I'm a big believer in investing the space that you're in, no matter how long you're there for. Our landlord basically gave me carte blanche to play in whatever capacity I wanted to. And so we painted, we added drapery, we added cabinets. I changed all of the light fixtures every single faucet that's in here. <laughs> and I really, really wanted to invest in where we were gonna be because that was going to be my maternity leave. It's actually a generous size entryway and we have a baby stroller in the way 99% of the time, so we know it's enough space. When we moved in, there were just the roller mirror doors and they were obviously quite large. And then they had one shelf that ran all the way inside. That was not going to work for us at all. So I put packs wardrobes across that whole area. That ends up being our main closet, slight baby pantry, and also where my husband keeps all his suits. And then on the other side, I put an Ikea shoe cabinet where I added a marble top and custom handles. Same thing with the Pax wardrobes. And then there is a powder room that I did floor to ceiling. I repainted, added cabinetry, changed faucets, everything. So that is meant to be, you know, the first thing that you walk into when you come home. And I am known to be an Ikea extraordinaire, I guess is the word. I do love Ikea because it's affordable, it's functional, it gives us exactly what we needed, but there are ways to upgrade it and make it look less Ikea. I don't know how people can function with such little storage in these condo kitchens. They don't actually give you enough. I have one bank of drawers and that's it. So I added a Besta unit, again, totally customizable with Ikea, where that's where I put extra dishes, that's where I put all my cutlery. The kitchen is quite neutral. I mean, the glass backsplash is a little bit dated for my taste, but not offensive at all. I did add a shelf for like our everyday cups and plates. I'm also only five foot two and a half, and so that drove me crazy because I'm always on my tippy toes trying to get to the top. So I added a shelf at a lower height for me specifically. I initially planned for a four-seater dining table. I designed a new table and new chairs, and we got here and only two of them fit. In fairness, I didn't anticipate my husband's desk to be 10 feet away from the dining room table, but that's where we're at. And so the dining room, dining room as in the table that's directly behind me, it's a great space. I mean, we use it every single day. It's just for the two of us. It's a round travertine table that I designed with the intention that we would take it to our next house and I only have two of the four chairs. So I've had two chairs sitting in storage for almost three years that I'm now going to sell that I custom made. <laughs> Mistake, lesson learned, we're done. <laughs> we knew we had windows wrapped all the way around, so I really wanted this space to feel light and bright and airy, whether that's considered trendy or whatever because everything's oak and white and black. I moved away from the black as much as I could and I wanted to integrate some more brown tones and warmer tones, but we were at the mercy of COVID purchasing. So I went to the restoration hardware and bought a couch and the only color it came in was white and I didn't have an option for a different slip cover without paying the same price as the couch. So we started with the couch. I built an ottoman with storage. I went with the best. I went with the shorter cabinet and I did collaborate with a company called Norse Interiors. And so we did cane doors all the way across. Five cabinets have been great. I mean, I do have a couple pieces of storage underneath for my son stuff because kids have a lot of little pieces. I had these two boucle chairs that I knew I really wanted. They were the Gwyneth Paltrow goop combo and of course everyone's like you have a baby and that's such a bad idea because everything's white. Honestly he's two. Like we haven't had any issues. It's outdoor fabric on my ottoman. I put a seat cover on my couch most of the time. Everything that we purchased did have the intention that it was the right size when we did move into our house. So whether I decide to slip cover the ottoman later, that's up to me, but I wanted it in a durable fabric in the right size with storage and to be flexible to move forward. Our bedroom, I wanted to do something different. 
My painter came over and we did a dark, muddy, earthy brown wash. And I'm so happy I did. I mean, it's, it cost me a fortune and I'm not gonna be able to take it with me and frame it. So I'm just gonna enjoy it for what it was. I wanted it to feel warm and earthy and kind of almost like a cocoon because I knew we were gonna spend a ton of time in there. I did add Amazon drapes in a darker burl wood color is what it was called on the internet. And it's one of my favorite spaces. I mean, it's only one wall, but it does feel like a warm hug. Leland's room is also one of my favorite spaces. I've always wanted to do jungle paper. It can be childlike and innocent, but also very interesting at the same time. It's monochromatic, but I think it's a bold enough pattern. And then I paneled the bottom half. He has a really cute curved archway oak crib. I did get a custom rocker made for him in an outdoor fabric that we were gonna bring with us. And I mean, you spend morning, noon, and night there. Like you're so sleep deprived that it, it, in reality, it's the room's for me. It's not really for Leland. So what did my childhood self want my room to look like? And I wanted it to look kind of like a jungle. So I have these tiny little prints. There's a giraffe, a lion, and a zebra. And now he's old enough and uses his words and he says, giraffe, every time. <laughs> so he thinks it's really funny. And it's just, it's so cute. It's so cute and playful without being very child focused. I think playing with the high low in a rental is a perfect way to achieve what you want for however long you want to live. The first condo we lived in, my husband lived there for seven years. Like that's a long time. Some people don't even live in their homes for seven years. Now. So something that we did like for our bathroom, for example, that we're going to take with us. I put in new towel bars. I put in new lighting, you know, things that we aren't going to be able to take with us. But the lighting makes a massive difference in that room. And I think the balance between the two is figuring out how to use big box furniture in a more creative way and adding little details and that elevates it to the next level. So how can you create pieces that are, let's call them lower priced and then adding a detail that makes it look more expensive and not actually break the bank.